So now that we've established a couple of different pre-Darwinian ideas, we're getting really close to what evolution is. And we're getting really close to figuring out what Charles Darwin, the man himself, said. We're going to continue our discussion on Darwinian evolution by finally introducing the man himself, the legend, the absolute goat, greatest of all time, Mr. Chucky Darwin. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Charles Darwin, and he's going to have a lot. So we're going to entitle him, or this flowchart, Charles Darwin 1. So, basic idea behind Charles Darwin. Let's do a bit of background information first. Just to understand who the man was and how everything that we're going to see about him really, really influenced biology altogether, the study of life. So, in his life, which was from about 1809, he lived and he died in 1882, he did a lot. And the most important part of his life was on board the Beagle. So we'll say, on board a ship called the Beagle. Okay, so it was the Beagle. And that was done from 1831 to about 1836. You could say five of the most influential years in all of biology. So, on the Beagle, he was known as the naturalist. Okay, every boat, this was an exploration that was supposed to, that was happening for five years. He was the naturalist uh, on the boat. He was the man in charge of going around whenever they got somewhere and um, collecting samples, let's say. He was supposed to collect and record and observe all of the variation, all of the diversity um, that was seen because it was an era of exploration, let's say, for right now. So this was the Beagle. And it traveled to um, the Galapagos Islands, many of the islands around that area. And on board the Beagle, he made observations, like I said, he made many observations. But specifically, these observations were about geology, the study of the Earth, okay, how the Earth was looking like to, in his view, and also about fossils. So that were, those were his main, let's say, job criteria and descriptions. And on board the Beetle, he actually read several influential books. He read books um, of those before him. So people like Lyell, people like Lamarck, um, there's another man, Thomas Malthus, that he really sort of read up on as he's aboard this Beagle to really sort of prime his mind for introducing the most influential topic of evolution uh, possibly in all of biology. So this is the most important time of his life aboard the Beagle. Now moving forward after his voyage let's say so we'll write after voyage so his life can literally be defined as before voyage during voyage and after voyage that's how critical that ship that trip uh, on the Beagle was. So after the voyage, he was actually considered and he was wi widely respected as a well-known naturalist. He was a very um, influential person, very smart man indeed. Um, he was a well-known naturalist and because of that, he actually published some books. He said, you know what, since people like my work so much, I'm going to publish it. And he published books um, on his trips, about the trips that he took, about these uh, voyages that he had aboard the Beagle. And about this, that was cr the critical thing about this, was that throughout this voyage, the reason why it was so critical was that he, for the first time, obtained empirical, meaning hardcore, truly scientific evidence. He obtained evidence for what we consider today evolution, and, and, this is the critical part, he developed what we widely regard as the most important mechanism in all of biology. You're going to learn so many things in biology. You've already learned so many things. But at the end of the day, you can say that everything in biology is devoted to evolution and the mechanism behind evolution. And that is what he would refer to, absolutely amazing, as the theory of natural and you know what I'm about to say, natural selection. This is crucial. This is critical. This is legendary. 
This is the story of legends, ladies and gentlemen. This was the point at which everything about the way that we study life is going to change. I cannot tell you how critical it was for this to happen. And moving forward, in 1858, this is when things really started picking up. In 1858, and I think this is really interesting, Darwin somehow, some way, actually receives a manuscript meaning that it was a sort of a completed, nearly completed book by a man named Alfred Russell Wallace from a man named Alfred Russell Wallace. So right now you're probably thinking, okay, what the heck does Alfred Russell Wallace have to do with Charles Darwin and what was in this manuscript? What was so critical that I have to devote an entire flowchart section to a manuscript given by a man that I've never heard of? Well, Alfred Russell Wallace, a little bit of background information on him, um, he gets the short end of the stick unfortunately. He was actually a naturalist, again that was the, the big thing back then, it was a really uh, trendy thing to be a scientist but also to be a naturalist, um, with the same theory. He was actually a scientist, a naturalist, with the same theory of natural selection. He believed in this manuscript that he showed to Darwin almost the exact same thing that Darwin came up with after his own voyage. Basically, these two guys were like, wow, we both think the exact same thing. You know, great minds think alike. This is truly the example of great minds think alike. So what happens is Darwin and Wallace become BFFs. Darwin plus Wallace, they join forces together and they actually both present together um, their findings. They both present to uh, the uh, really important, really crucial um, Linnaean society of the time. So remember Carlos Linnaeus? Well, I told you he was really important. You probably didn't care. There's actually, at the time of Darwin and Wallace, an entire, let's say, scientific organization named after him. Basically, the people, the, the crazy minds, the super minds of the time all came together and created the Linnaean Society that devoted themselves to correct and absolute science of the time. And this presentation was done in 1858. This presentation by Darwin and Wallace to the Linnaean Society, basically the smartest scientists of the world at that time, um, eventually resulted in Darwin finally coming up and later publishing the following. Darwin, after the presentation, later publishes, so this is the greatest moment, I would say, in probably biology altogether. Darwin later publishes what we have to remember and make sure you do not forget the book known as On the Origin of, and I'm not going to even shorthand this one because it does it an injustice if you shorthand this title, On the Origin of Species by Natural Selection. This man Darwin writes a book that tells you about the origin of life, the origin of all species by his mechanism and Alfred Russell Wallace's mechanism of natural selection in 1859. An absolutely critical date, critical year, critical moment in all of biology. Uh, I know I'm really harping on this, but this was, ladies and gentlemen, a game changer. Everything that we know about biology is about to go upside down, actually right side up, because everything before this was upside down, was not correct. And we're going to see what this entails, what the origin of species by natural selection entails as we move forward through our journey of Darwinian evolution in the next couple of flowcharts.